that was a fun little video, wasn't it? Now that you understand a little bit more about how chemical reactions work, I need you to find the graphing assignment because we're actually going to be looking at your graph. So if you haven't already got out the graphing assignment, get it out. You saw that in the first part of the video. And we're going to look at these two graphs. Now, I know we've already sort of looked at these graphs, and you should already recognize that the first bar is the reactants, the second bar would then be the products. And this is how an energy would look, or energy would look if we did just the reactants and products for an exothermic reaction, as you can see again, less energy in the products than we started with in the reactants. The opposite for an endothermic reaction, as you can see, we have less energy in the reactants, much more energy in the products that's showing that energy was taken out of the system, out of the environment, pulled into uh, the substances to make this reaction happen. However, what neither graph shows at all is how we need activation energy to make this reaction happen. So instead of just looking at before and after bar graphs, we're actually going to look at energy curves. And the first thing that you're going to do here is you're just going to do some labeling on these graphs as per the instructions in your notes. So let me show you where these things are. Uh, you probably sort of notice that this looks similar. We have uh, energy here, energy here, something's going on in the middle. At the start, these are the reactants. I'm going to write a big R for reactants, but you're going to write the word reactants because you actually have paper and pencil, not a giant screen. If I see an R on here, I'll know that you aren't really paying very much attention. Over here, these will be our products. I'm going to use P for product, but you're going to write the word product. Same thing on this reaction. We've got our reactants here. We've got our products over here. And you can already see on this one over here on the left, we've got more energy in the reactants than we did in the products. Over here, we've got less energy in the reactants than we do in our final products. The question is what's going on in the middle? Now you can see we're starting at a certain amount of energy, which we could graph with real numbers on a real graph, but wait for it. And up here, this is where the reaction starts. So at the top of each graph, I want you to label this as this is where the reaction starts. And the amount of energy it takes from where you start out with the reactants not reacting, the amount of energy that has to be put in can be represented with this bracketed line right here. I usually draw it right here, right up the middle. Go bloop, go bloop. Either way, on this graph, they're using the unit kilocalories, and they're telling you that 40 kilocalories is the activation energy. That's the energy to go from here to the top where the reaction actually starts. You'll notice that on this graph, uh, the reactants are starting a little bit lower, so we have to go higher from our low point in the reactants, not the lowest point on the graph, just the point of the reactants. You go all the way up to the top of the curve. This is where the reaction starts. So this right here, this 45 kilocalories, that is the activation energy. So label these bracketed off points as the activation energy. You will, of course, notice again that you've got less energy here in the products than you had in the reactants. So this is an exothermic reaction. Make sure you label this one on the left your notes as an exothermic reaction. Label this one over here because there's more energy in the products than we started with. This is an endothermic reaction. Keep in mind that if we are looking at delta H, the change in thermal energy here, here we have an increase, so delta H will be a positive number of some kind. And over here, because we're going down, we have less energy, delta H is going to be a negative number of some kind. Make sure you should have all four of those labeled on the notes right here, right now. Now what you will need is a fresh sheet of graphing paper because you're going to make a graph that looks like those curves using actual real numbers. You're going to staple this on to this set of notes. So you turned in, you should have these graphs. You also have this graph. More on that in a minute. But you're going to have a third graph that's stapled in. Remember, graph paper in the room over there. You might want some training wheels too. Here are the numbers that you are going to graph. It'll be fun. So I want you to make me a graph where we've got 82 uh, kilojoules per mole of energy in the reactants and 216 kilojoules per mole in the products. I want it to look more like this curve, less like bar graphs. That'll be fun, right? So in order to make this look more like a curve, let's go ahead and set the activation energy for 300 kilojoules per mole. That'll be the top of the curve. 
and so that everyone's graphs end up looking the same so we have a good comparison to the graph that I will be drawing. Uh, go ahead and start your minimum for your uh, activation energy. Let's start that sucker at zero. How fun. Keep in mind that you have categorical data for your independent variable, not numbers, so you will not need a scale for your x-axis, just for your y-axis. So now, uh, you'll make the graph, and I'll make the graph, and it'll be a great fun race. Yay, how exciting. So you'll see I've got my scale all worked out here on the graph. Uh, if you had 26 lines, then you could also use this for your scale. If you use the uh, pre-made graph paper with the built-in training wheels, then you should be using 20 lines. If you just copy this down, I'd go ahead and uncopy it. But once you have your scale set up properly, however it works for you, um, then I'll show you how to graph this. So we're gonna start with our 82. So we find where 82 would be, which would be probably right about in here. And we're just gonna draw, you know, first let's, let's go ahead and cordon off our axes there a little bit. Make sure uh, that you have room for a label. I ran out of room for a label down here, but this is just uh, the time or the reaction progress would be on your X axis here. On your Y axis, obviously this would be energy. Energy, how fun. All right, so we're gonna start at 82, which would be probably about right in here. Now, at the start of the reaction, we just have our reactants. So they've got about 82 kilojoules per mole worth of uh, energy. Let me make that. All right. Now, the point that we need to hit for the reaction to start is 300. Notice there's 288. 288 plus 12 would be like 302. So 300 would probably be right about in here. I'm just going to do a little dirt up there. So we've done that one, we've done this one, and now the 216 in our products. Now hopefully uh, you left yourself a little more room. My graph's obviously gonna be kind of uh, stretchy doodle. So I find 216, which on this graph, oh look, it's clearly defined. I just put that at the end, another straight line at the end. So you can see we're making the foundations of these curves here. Then you just retrace your line here, going on up. Flop it down, straighten it out, boom! There's our reaction. Again, make sure that you have time as your x-axis label. You've got energy as your y-axis label. This is what we would call an energy versus time graph. Go ahead and label your reactants. Go ahead and label your products. Label your activation energy, which again, comes from here and goes up to the top of the graph. So we're going to start at the point of the reactants, go to the top of the graph. And actually, this activation energy has a number, and I want you to label the number for your activation energy. To find that, you just subtract the amount of energy from the top of the graph from the amount of energy that was already present in your reactants. Or you take 300 minus 82 which I cannot do in my head, but luckily for you, I have my friend the calculator. That gives us an activation energy of 218 kilojoules per mole. Uh, that is the amount of energy that we have to put into this reaction. We have to put 218 kilojoules for every mole that we have to make this reaction happen, whatever the reaction is. Uh, the whole per mole and uh, enthalpy will make a lot more sense after you take chemistry, which will be sometime like junior, maybe senior year. Not for right now. For right now, if you can understand this graph and you understand that here's our reactants, here's our products. If you have numbers or you just have a graph and you can sort of guesstimate the numbers, 
then you should be able to more or less get a rough calculation for the amount of energy required to start this reaction, aka the activation energy. Make sure you have all of these labeled on your graph, and it might be a good idea to raise your hand and have Patterson check it, you know, before you move on to the rest of the notes. But before we get to the rest of the notes, I want you to watch the rest of the video here. You're going to start at 137, and you should see uh, the, the student and the teacher together. They're going to talk about how we can take that activation energy and just shrink it down like magic, as you just saw.